This month, GameMaker released a new Move and Collide function, which enables you to easily add slopes to your game. Here's an example of the kind of stuff you can do. This is all added with very simple code, probably less than 20 lines, and you get all of this happening very easily. So if you want to see how to do this in around about 20 lines, then keep watching and I'll show you how. Good day, gamers. Today I've got a tutorial that's a little bit more informal. That's because GameMaker have just released a new version that includes easy collision with slopes. So now you can use a move and collide function to collide very easily with slopes. This is just a top down game, but I want to take a look at the function and see if we can make it work well with a 2D platformer. So let's jump over to GameMaker and we'll add the basics. Now I'm using the beta version, but this is also available in the latest stable. So let's create a few sprites that we're going to need. So we're going to have our player sprite and I'm going to set these up as 16 by 16. And we'll just set that as a blue color. Now let's duplicate that. And this is just going to be our solid. And this time I'm going to set it to a red color. And let's duplicate it again. And this time we're going to have a separate shape just for our slopes, but it's still going to be a rectangle. So let's call it solid slope. And for this one, let's make the color a little bit different. Just make it a bit darker so we can see when we're using it. Even just a, a little bit darker than that, actually. There we go. And the difference is that we're going to go to the collision mask and we're going to set it to manual and we're going to set it to the precise slow. And that'll enable us to rotate it at any angle. So let's create some objects to match these. And we're going to have an O player. Drag in the player sprite. And we're going to have our O solid. Drag in the solid. And as well as that, we're going to have our solid slope. Now we'll go to the, uh, let's also make one more. We'll make a O solid parent and that'll encompass both of these. So we'll take these two, we'll go to the parent and just drag it in. So they're children now of that. Now let's go to create event and I'll also add the GML visual code on the side. So if you do drag and drop or visual, you'll still be able to follow along. So for the moment, we'll just set this as GML code and a few things that we're going to need. Uh, I'm going to need a move speed. Uh, let's go three. We're going to need some gravity and we'll have 0 0.26. Uh, we have our standard HSP and VSP and our jump speed. And I'm going to set another variable and I'm going to call it slope max and I'll set it to four. And that will help us when we're moving down the slopes. All right, so let's add a step event. And let's have a look at our room as well, actually. I'm going to make some changes here. Let's make it 640 by 360. And let's enable viewports and set our room to 640 by 360. But let's stretch this to 1280 by 720 so we can see it a bit better. And we'll make this one visible and we don't need to see that. Okay, so let's draw some of our room up here. I'm going to change the grid size to 32 down to 16. And let's draw some of these shapes in. So holding Alt, I can just add them in the room. And we'll just add a border. And let's just add some of these slopes around the place. So the solid slope that we're going to use, if we drop it here, uh, when you rotate it, it'll rotate at a locked point, which is the origin. So if you rotate it and hold down shift, you can get a nice angle. So like this one, for example, which is 45 degrees. So if I pop that right in the corner and then stretch this so that it, if I hold down control, I can drag it easily. And then it sits nicely like that. And what I also like to do, and I'll do this right at the end, is take the slopes and just drag them under the actual solids, just so we don't see them hanging out. Basically, you can make a room like that. So if you want to take a solid and you want to place it here, 
and then you want to have a slope going down here. If I take this and place it here, you'll see that what happens is when I do this, I'm rotating from that point, so the top left. So you don't really want to do that because then it's not exactly on this point here that you want. So what you can do is you know that you want that point to be there, so you just push it over here, and then when you rotate it, it'll rotate from that point. So you can easily have that, and then you get a nice clean connection right there. So I'm just gonna go and fill this room in using all that information, and I'll be back in a second. Now, just while you're building, you might find something happens like this. So I've got a shape here, and as soon as I try to drag it, you can see that it changes its position. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, whether that's a bug in the current version, but I find if that happens, I just delete it and then I add another one. And then it's fine. I don't know if it affects us when the game starts, but I don't like the look of it, so I just remove it and I make sure that uh, none of them are doing that. Now, there's my finished test room. So what I also like to do is just go to instances again, and basically you can take all of the slopes, just hold down control, select them all. Make sure you don't double click on them like that. And just drag them up the top and that'll place them behind so it just doesn't look as bad. But the other thing you can also do is change the color so they're the same as the solid if you don't want to see them. I just like to know what a, a uh, slope is and what a normal solid is because we do have precise collisions on these. So you don't want to use them if you don't have to. Now I left an area up here blank because I wanted to show you that you can also just use solid slopes. So you could actually just place slopes only if you'd like. So say for example up here, So if I had this coming in here, bring this down and say if you wanted to just have rotations, you could do it freehand as well and it still should work fine. But sometimes you just got to get the right point so you don't end up having sort of weird corners here. So it does take a bit of time to get where you want, but you could do this and you don't need to have angles that you're forming just by holding down shift. So here, for example, you could have a couple that, that really angle weirdly. So what you want to do is point this holding down control. You can find the point where you can join them up. And, you know, if you wanted to have sort of strange angles, you, you really can. This is pretty flexible stuff, actually. Okay, something like that, for example, and then you could then flatten it out again down here. Now there's some of that weirdness going on there too. You can see that it's changing. So you could either replace that one or you might be happy with it. But you could leave something like that in too. Okay, so make sure you place a player in the room and let's go and add some code here to actually make the player move. So this tutorial is not going to be a step-by-step. -step. It's going to be really an overview of how I've uh, completed this code. But basically what I always like to do in any of my tutorials and my courses is firstly get our input. Then I always calc our movement. So we do our calculations for our movement. And then we do our collisions. Now I'm going to call it this time, I'm going to call it move and collide because that's what GameMaker are calling it. But basically they're the basis of how to get your game moving. So for our get input, I'm just going to paste in code here to make it quicker. You can pause it if you need to. I'm going to capture our left, our right, and our jump. Now I'm going to take our movement and I'm going to apply it to a variable called move. So this is going to be one when we're moving right, minus one when we're moving left, and zero when we are not moving. And then we can apply that to our horizontal speed, our HSP, and that'll then give us some horizontal movement. 
Now for our vertical movement, so this is, we should just make a note here and say this is our horizontal movement. And then we should say this is our vertical movement. Okay, so in order to do our vertical movement, we're going to first need a check to see if we're on a platform. So just up here, I'm going to add a check. I'm going to look for a solid parent below us. So if there's a solid or a solid slope below us, then I'm going to store that value, a true or false, into solid collision. Now, I'm not just looking at X and Y. I'm looking at X and Y plus that slope max value, which is 4. And the reason is, is when you're going down a slope, this will enable you to jump while you're moving down a slope. So using that, I'm going to apply gravity to our VSP so that the player falls. And when the player presses jump and that solid collision is true, well, then we'll set our VSP to a minus jump speed and that'll make them jump. Okay, so all of that's pretty basic stuff in relation to platformers. So let's have a look at our move and collide code. Now, this is the new function that GameMaker has introduced. And what it does, it takes in a distance in the X, distance in the Y, and the object you want to collide with. Now, everything after that is optional. If you want to know more about those, I suggest you middle click on this and you can read about it in the manual. I'm only using the first three arguments. So our horizontal speed, our vertical speed, and the solid that we want to collide with. Well, it's the parent because that encompasses the solid and the solid slope. Now, it returns an array of the instances that you're colliding with. So I'm going to store it in the variable array. And after we've run that, I'm then going to look at that array. And I'm going to say if the array length is not zero. So if we returned an object that we collided with and we have a collision below us, then I'm going to set VSP to zero. Now, the reason I'm adding this in is this will stop the player walking on the roof, basically. This will ensure that if the array returns the solid that's above us, we still get our VSP to be set to zero. Because if you don't have this check, essentially you'll be able to walk on diagonal ceilings. All right, well, let's test this and look at some of the problems that happen just with this basic system. Okay, so our player's there, they can jump, they can move up. So it's pretty decent. Does a pretty good job. We can even move up this crazy one. So just as it is, it's not too bad. So what are the problems? Okay, let's go over here. And let's have a look and see if we can see where some of the errors are. It doesn't actually walk down the slopes, if you notice. It just jumps over them because it doesn't actually clamp itself to the slope as it's going down. So let's just go and have a look at how we can fix that. So just here before we do our move and collide, let's add some extra code and this will help us to adhere to the slopes. So if we have a collision below us, but we don't have a collision with the solid and we are moving down, then basically we're going to look for a collision with the solid and just move one pixel at a time. So what we'll do is actually clamp us to the slope as we're walking down it. And you can see there, we now, when we go down, up and down, we no longer fly off. We just stick to this, uh, the slope. That's much nicer. And you can see there. So there's a, there's a, there is a maximum distance. If you see this one, we, we made this really steep. So it doesn't stick to that one. So that slope max value, if you adjusted it, you could still stick to that. But, you know, that's pretty steep. You probably don't want to do that. But other than that, everything works pretty good. So in general, though, it's a pretty small amount of code in order to get slopes working within your platformer. So if this helps you out and you want to know more about the coding stuff that I do, I have a new course over on Udemy. It's basically a first platformer course where you get power-ups. You can jump on blocks to kill enemies, jump on enemies' heads. I'll show you how to do sequences and how to add many effects to make a really great game. I also have my tile-based platformer course. It's one of the highest rated Game Maker 2 courses over on Udemy. Check out both in the links below. And lastly, I just want to thank my Patreons. This month, these are my Patreon members. All legendary Patreon members get free access to my courses. So I'll place all this source code over on Patreon and you can grab it if you're a member. So thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you in the next one.